Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and a very warm welcome if this is your first visit. Now this is a third video that I've put together for the Garmin Descent Mark II i. If you haven't seen either of these two videos, then I'll pop a link to those at the end of this video and I'll also put them in the description, but make sure you check them out because there's some really useful information in there. Now, I've had a number of questions on the first two videos that relate to dive data screens. Lots of viewers asking how you view the dive data screen, uh, how you can amend the data, what customization is available. So I thought it'd be really useful to put together this quick video and to take you through those steps of how you can do that really simply and very, very easily. And remember guys, if you do find this video useful, think about giving it a thumbs up. It's really appreciated. And also clicking on that subscribe button and hitting that bell icon to be notified when future videos are uploaded, including the planned video we've got coming up very soon of the Garmin Descent Mark II i versus the Shearwater Terek. Right, so let's get on with the subject of this video. Now, thanks to the intellectual software in the Garmin Descent Mark II i, there are three different ways that you can view your dive data screens during your dive. Option number one, the Mark II has a great new feature that allows you to scroll through the dive data screens by tapping the face of the unit. This is a really useful feature as the whole of the watch face is the target area rather than pushing a small button. Option number two. Thanks to the gesture feature, you can also flip through the dive data screens by simply flicking your hand while wearing the Mark II on your wrist. This is absolutely perfect if you are an underwater photographer and happen to have one hand occupied with your camera rig. And finally, option number three, you also have the ability to scroll through the dive data screens by using the standard method of pushing the up and down buttons on the left hand side of the unit. Now, most of the questions I've had have been around how these screens can be configured and what information and data can be seen. And that's the process I want to take you through now. The easiest way to amend these screens is by starting with a long press on the left middle button, which takes you into the main menu. Scroll down to activities and apps and press select, and then select the activity you want to amend. We'll start with single gas, as I imagine this will be the most popular for the majority of divers. And then go into that, select settings, then select data screens. Down the left hand side, you can see that there are four dots and a plus sign. As you scroll through these, you can see what each of the data screens looks like. If you select add, you can see that you can add a number of additional screens and also a stopwatch timer. If you select one of these, you'll be then be asked where in the order you want it to be stored. I'll add custom screen two and stopwatch for the purpose of this video. And now you can see that there are six dots and a plus sign down the left hand side. To edit a screen, press the top right button next to the pencil logo. Some fields are set and can't be amended, but we'll go through each one of those anyway. Starting with the overview screen, pressing the button will bring up two options, layout and reorder. Select layout and you'll see that you can choose between the tank pressure on the Mark II i and one data field. Now, if we select the data field, in this case showing temperature, and press select, you'll see that you now have three options, layout, data field, and reorder. If we select data fields and press select again, you'll see that we have some options to scroll through. Diving fields, heart rate fields, temperature fields, compass fields, and other fields. We'll start with diving fields. Here you can select your central nervous system, oxygen toxicity, maximum depth, and time to surface. Going into heart rate fields, you can select heart rate, average heart rate, heart rate percentage max, percentage heart rate reserve, average heart rate percent max, and average percent heart rate reserve. Next down is temperature fields. Here you can choose between temperature and minimum temperature. Next is compass. Here it just shows the compass bearing. And finally, we have other fields. 
In here you'll find battery level, time of sunrise, time of sunset and time of day. If we then go down to the next screen to customise, which I have set as compass, you see that you can't amend anything other than the order of the screen in the view. This is also the same for the next screen that I have set, which is transmitter. I can't edit the fields, only the order that it appears in the sequence. However, when we get to the first of the custom screens, this is where the level of customization really stands out. Selecting the edit button gives you five options. Data fields, left gauge, right gauge, reorder and remove. Data fields is the content on the main screen. Left gauge is the information displayed down the left hand side of the screen. Right gauge is for the gauge on the right. Reorder changes the order of the screen in the sequence and delete removes the custom screen. Let's start with the data fields. Select the area you want to amend and press select. In here, you can go through all of the fields as we did before and customize each of the areas on how you want your screen to look. You can't, however, amend the fields in the bottom of the screen, which are your NDLs, your depth and your dive time. Moving on to the left and right gauges, these can be amended to show either your CNS, your OTUs, have nothing there at all so it's blank, your nitrogen and helium loading, or your heart rate. The great thing with having the ability to add a number of custom screens means that you can set up each page to show different data fields. Finally, in stopwatch timer, you can only reorder the sequence of the screen or delete it. You can't amend any of the data inside. The process is exactly the same in multigas and CCR. The same data fields are available and the customization is exactly the same. The main data screen in gauge looks like this, but you can't amend the fields. You can, however, have a number of other pages added to the sequence. The data screens on Apnea and Apnea Hunt can't be amended, but look like this. In Apnea, you can see the time, the depth, your heart rate, your maximum depth, and your meters per second. In Apnea Hunt, you have four data fields, time, depth, temperature, and meters per second. Only having four data fields uh, allows for the numbers to kind of feel a little bit larger and clearer. Now I hope that that has helped to answer most of the questions that you had on dive data screens. I do understand it's a lot of information on the first time of watching, but trust me guys, once you've done it once, it's really, really straightforward process. However, if any of you do have any more questions on dive data fields or the customization of them, please do drop it in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. I really do hope you've enjoyed this short video and that you found it useful. And remember guys, click on that little subscribe button because we've got a ton of review videos coming very, very soon. But for now, listen, thanks ever so much for watching and I will look forward to catching up soon. Cheers.